Good day, Great Teams. Today, we will learn about some of the elements in the periodic table. The periodic table is one of the most important tools and sources of information that we can use when we study chemistry. Dmitry Mendeleev, a Russian scientist, developed the periodic table. In 1869, he arranged the 66 elements that were known at that stage in order of their atomic mass. Gaps were left to allow for elements that were still to be discovered. As you can see, it looked a bit different from the periodic table we use today. The reason that it looks different is that it was later discovered that there was a link between the atomic number of an element and its position in the periodic table. Remember that atomic mass is the mass of the protons and the neutrons in the nucleus, whereas the atomic number is just the number of protons in the nucleus of the atom. Today, the periodic table is organized in relation to how the atomic number increases. At present, there are 118 known elements of which 94 occur naturally. The rest can be made in the laboratory. In order to use the periodic table, we need to know the symbols for the different elements. This is very important as it not only will help us find the correct information on the periodic table for a given element, but we will use these symbols in all chemistry. We will go through the periodic table and fill in the symbols for the elements that you need to know. It's a long list, so this works best if you have a blank periodic table to fill in as well. The first element we come across on the top left corner is hydrogen. It has an atomic number 1 and its symbol is H. We will work our way across the periodic table from left to right. You can see that the next block you come to is all the way in the right. This is helium and has an atomic number of 2 and has a symbol capital H and a lower case. It is very important that you write these symbols correctly with the first letter always a capital and the rest lowercase letters. You may also wonder how the elements are positioned, but by the end of this series we will understand why the elements are placed where they are. We now move on to the second row of the periodic table. Lithium is the next element. It has an atomic number of 3 and has the symbol capital L lowercase i. Next we have beryllium with atomic number 4. Its symbol is capital B, lowercase e. Capital B is the symbol for the next element. This is boron and has an atomic number of 5. Note that the atomic number of the elements increases as we work across the row and down the periodic table. The next element is carbon. It has an atomic number 6 and its symbol is capital C. Carbon is a very special element. It is the only non-metal that can conduct electricity. Here we see the pencil lead, which is actually carbon used in an electric circuit. This form of carbon is called graphite. If carbon is put under lots of pressure at a high temperature, it arranges itself differently and forms diamonds. The next element, nitrogen, has an atomic number 7 and is represented by a capital N. Oxygen has an atomic number 8 and its symbol is a capital O. Next is fluorine. It has an atomic number of 9 and has the symbol capital F. The final element in this row is neon. It has a symbol capital N, lowercase e, and its atomic mass is 10. Neon is a noble gas and is not reactive but gives off a bright light when electricity passes through it. This is used a lot in shop signs and some city centers. Now we move on to the next row. The first element in this third row is sodium. Its symbol is a capital N, lowercase a. This may seem strange, but it actually comes from the Latin natrium. Its atomic number is 11. Sodium is a silver gray metal and needs to be stored in oil. The reason for this is that it is highly reactive with water and with the water vapor in the air. Here we see how that sodium reacts so violently with water that it actually ignites and burns. Great tens, it's not necessary for you to learn the original Latin and Greek names of the elements, but I think it is of interest and useful to understand where the symbols come from. 
Next is magnesium. It has an atomic number of 12 and it is represented by capital M lowercase g. Magnesium is also a silver metal and it burns in oxygen with a very bright white light. Aluminium has an atomic number of 13 and its symbol is capital A lowercase l. After aluminium we have silicon. It is represented by a capital S lowercase i and has 14 protons in its nucleus. Silicon is one of the most useful elements to mankind. It acts as both a metal and a non-metal. Such an element is called a metalloid or semi-metal. Silicon can be used in computer chips as well as other electronic parts and equipment as it conducts electricity extremely well in the right conditions. Silicon can also be used to make everyday tools such as kitchen ladles or even in medicine to make artificial skin. The 15th element in the periodic table is phosphorus. It is represented by the symbol capital P. Sulfur's symbol is capital S and it has atomic number 16. Note that the correct spelling of sulfur is S-U-L-F-U-R. The next element is chlorine. It has the symbol capital C lowercase l and it has 17 protons. The last element in this row is argon. It is represented by a capital A lowercase r and has atomic number 18. We need to know at least the first 36 elements on the periodic table as well as a few others that are often used. Now let's look at the next row. The first element in this row is potassium. It is represented by the capital letter K. Again, this may seem strange, but it comes from the Latin calium. Its atomic number is 19. Next, we have calcium. Its symbol is capital C, lowercase a, and has an atomic number of 20. Calcium is a soft, silvery gray metal. Calcium reacts very rapidly with water and this reaction gives off lots of heat. The next element has the symbol capital S, lowercase c. It is scandium and has atomic number 21. This is followed by titanium with symbol capital T, lowercase i. Its atomic number is 22. Titanium is a silvery white gray metal. Titanium is very strong, but much lighter than most steels, so it is very useful. It is used in many industries, such as in aerospace, in medicine as artificial joints, and in jewelry. The next element is vanadium. Its symbol is capital V, and it has 23 protons. Chromium is next. Its symbol is capital C, lowercase r. Its atomic number is 24. Manganese has an atomic number of 25 and its symbol is capital M lowercase n. Next is iron. Its symbol is capital F lowercase e. This comes from the Latin ferrum. Its atomic number is 26. Iron by mass is the most abundant element on earth. It forms much of the earth's outer and inner core. Iron is very strong and very cheap so it has many different uses such as pots and pans, fences and even as horseshoes for horses. Cobalt symbol is capital C lowercase o. The atomic number is 27. Next is nickel. It has an atomic number of 28 and its symbol is capital N lowercase i. Copper has the symbol capital C lowercase u. This comes from the Latin cuprum. It has 29 protons. Copper is a reddish orange shiny metal. It is malleable and ductile. It is often used as coins or as jewelry. It is a very good conductor of electricity, so is used in electrical cables. And is a very good conductor of heat, so is also used in cooking pots. This is followed by zinc. Its symbol is capital Z, lowercase n, and its atomic number is 30. Zinc is a dull gray metal. It is mainly used to prevent other metals from rusting or in combination with other metals as an alloy, but also important as the anode in batteries. The next element has a symbol capital G, lowercase a, and has atomic number 31. It is gallium. 
Next is germanium. Its symbol is capital G, lowercase e, and its atomic number is 32. Arsenic is represented by the symbol capital A, lowercase s, and its atomic number is 33. Capital S, lowercase e, stands for selenium with an atomic number of 34. The second last element in this row is bromine. It has an atomic number of 35 and is represented by a capital B, lowercase r. The last element in this row is krypton. It has a symbol capital K, lowercase r, and has atomic number 36. And no, it has nothing to do with Superman. Now that we have discussed the first 36 elements of the periodic table, we need to learn about just a few more very useful elements. The first of these is silver. Silver is represented by the symbol capital A, lowercase g. This comes from the Greek word arguros. It has atomic number 47 and is found under copper in the periodic table. Silver is a precious metal because of its high value. It was used to make money, jewelry and expensive cutlery. Next to silver is another important element. This is cadmium. Its symbol is capital C, lowercase d, and its atomic number is 48. Cadmium is a silver bluish metal and it is used in rechargeable batteries. The next element that we need to know is tin. This has a symbol capital S and lowercase letter n. This comes from the Latin stannum. Tin has an atomic number of 50 and is found under germanium. Tin is a silvery grey metal. Because tin does not corrode easily, it is used to plate metals such as food cans so that goods can be stored for a long time. The next very useful element is gold. It has the symbol capital A lowercase u and has atomic number 79. It is found directly below silver on the periodic table. Its symbol is derived from the Latin word aurum. Gold is a precious metal and is so rare that it is used as a base for the world's currency. As it does not corrode and is very malleable and ductile, it has been used throughout history to make jewellery and ornaments, and in science such as in Rutherford's experiment. And also, since gold does not corrode, it has been used as false teeth. Next is mercury. Its symbol is capital H, lowercase g, and is found next to gold on the periodic table. It has an atomic number of 80. The symbol is derived from the Greek word hydragyros. Mercury is the only metal that is liquid at room temperature. Because mercury is liquid and expands with heat, it used to be used in thermometers. This is stopped as mercury is very toxic. It is used in batteries and is used in astronomy in liquid mercury telescopes. And the final element that you need to know is lead. This has atomic number 82 and its symbol is capital P, lowercase b, derived from the Latin word plumbum. We get our word plumber from this because pipes used to be made of lead. Lead is a soft, dark grey malleable metal. Lead is a very useful metal and has many uses. One is as a radiation shield for X-ray technicians. It is also a very important part of a lead acid battery which we use in our cars. We have covered all the names and symbols of the elements on the periodic table that we need to know. It is important that you learn and know these names and symbols as we will use these throughout our chemistry work. Grade 10s, you'll find more information about the periodic table at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Remember to try some of the questions in the task video too. Goodbye.